so we're going to have plenty to do, but let's turn our attention to the OK qualifying heat for A versus D. And it's the man who could seal pole position on the front row of the grid alongside Gabriel Gomez, but the two of them are fighting each other for the right to be in pole position. Gabriel Gomez is pole, Yugo Bukachukwu second. Provisionally, they're the other way round. Timo Kacharczyk is third from Arvid Limblad, then Martin Stenzorn and Rintaro Sato. Tuka Tarpanen, Artem Severukin, Ariel Elkin, Juho Valtanen, Nicolas Petalati, Giovanni Trentin, Emily Koivisto, Ruben Moya, Matteo De Paolo and Rafael Modenese. Then we have Luca Griggs and uh, Albani Vivas, Erlen Nirandini, Alcio Svina, Art, uh, Arnie Shabar, Lawrence Lesertua, Carmen Krav, Rasmus Uchimis, Bruno Del Pino, Erey Valeo Luque, Kevin Cavedo, Kuba Ratsky, Robin Sarg and Alvaro Hernandez Viedma. Yeah, from the beginning of the weekend, people were asking, who on earth is this Gabriel Gomez character? And how on earth has he got this fast? Nobody's asking that now. They know how quick he is. And here this weekend, he has a real chance to make history in his second ever appearance in the FIA Karting Championships. He could become world champion. We go green up to the first corner. And it's a good start from Gomez. But around the outside, Uga Chupu and Limblad have got an absolute stormer. They get straight through. And Gomez is going to drop down behind Rintaro Sato. So again, the outside line gets a flyer and it's Yuga Chukwu and Lindblad that storm past the Brazilian. Lindblad is right on the back of his New York teammate. Well, wow, that's what he needed indeed. Arvid Lindblad is sitting at the moment in eight on the grid of the final and he needs to be up there. He needs to harass Yuga Chukwu. That's going to be an interesting duet between the two teammates as Ritaro Sato having the pressure already on Gabriel Gomez who missed his start from the inside line but still managed to get through and he's going to go for third around the inside of Tony Miller 11. This is done for Gabriel Gomez up into third and he's telling the others and Sato the first let's not fight just right now we have a long way to go into this race let's try to catch up those two young men Igor Kuchuku and Lin Bland but Rintar Sato is having none of it and fight back around the inside of turn number 14 oh. and he takes back the position and a couple of drivers with him as well so Gomez is dropping a pile of positions in the process he's down to a fifth or sixth crossing the line he's lost four places in that one move so Sato's third Severukin's fourth Valtanen's fifth and Stenz on sixth Gomez down at a seventh place now from Ruben Moya, Tuka Tarpanen, and Timurus Kuchacic. Raphael Kamara must be loving this as there goes the move from Valtanen as he gets past. So does Stenzorn and so does Gomez past Savrukin and also Ruben Moya gets there as well. The Spanish driver comes up another position but Raphael Kamara must be loving this because now that Gomez is down the order he is looking at third on the starting grade and, and Tarpanen losing positions as well. He's down in ninth position not where he wanted to be. Stenzorn now making the move on the inside of Valtanen. He has to bail out of it but Gomez needs to fight back, otherwise Kamara will be ahead of him on the grid. Yeah, in the meantime as well, Gomez lost a position to Ruben Moya in the process. I think he's ahead, yes he needs the 32 as you can see, ahead of the CRG driver coming to turn number 14. What a pack of driver that is, led by Hio Valtaren, stands on in the middle. He's going around inside of the finished driver, oh a bit of a wheel touching over there, I think it was tight. But Valtaren managed himself ahead, he stays in front, Gomez is going to go from the inside, can he attack? Watch out for the back as well, we have Tuka Tapolen back in the mix and he get actually moved down the young Finnish driver ahead of Artem Severukin dropping all the way to nine. Yeah, Tarpanen needed that overtaking move on Severukin. He is hemorrhaging places on the grid for the World Championship final. If he's not careful, Lopez really got caught out at the end of that final turn. Ruben Moya Lopez really struggling. He's lost a lot of positions now down to 11th just in front of Luka Griggs and Timo Kocacic, who's really not getting good balance in these greasy conditions. The two Kart Republic drivers just storming away out front. Yuga Chukwu and Limblad well clear. Stenzorn actually having to defend now from, Gun uh, from Gabriel Gomez. So Gomez is right there in position, trying to get himself back up the order. But Gomez now down in sixth. So that's going to drop Gomez actually behind Oscar Pedersen on the starting grid to third place. So this is not what Gomez needed. And he's going to have to try and make his bid up the inside. Severukin is going to tag wheels with Tarpon. And if they're not careful, they just about get away with that. And is that Ariel Elkin fighting his way through? It is indeed. Ariel Elkin squeezes Nicolas Piertolatti on the final corner. Piertolatti rides the rumble strip and loses about three places to Griggs, Moya and Giovanni Trentin. So a very tricky end to the lap. But Yuga Chukwu is flying away. Yeah, what a race that is. And Gabriel Gomez was not able to get past Martinus Tenzon as for now. He really need to get out of this because further back he had uh, Tuka Tapan and Severiukin battling along but very putting the pressure on the Brazilian. He was able now to put a bit of a gap between himself and the rest as Hugo Iguchuku is leading the way for six, seven, six tenths of a second, almost seven on Harvard Lindblad. A one-two for Carlo Republic, not in formation as for now. G Gomez just got Stenzon. Now there that's an important one. So Gomez is going to secure third place by making up that position 
because that will put him one point clear of Rafael Kamara. So that's going to put him third on the starting grid for the final. Here's Yuga Chukwu, still looking good for the win and pole position. He would only have dropped one heat all weekend. Lindblad is doing everything he can to catch him. It's not working. Sato is third, Valton in his fourth, and there's Gomez in fifth. As up the inside to sixth comes Tukatapanen. Wow, beautifully made round the inside for Tuka Tapanen on stand zone. Uh, Severikin was trying to do the same, but the door was shut. Oh, and a bit of will touch in the touch. A lot of contact over there with Ariel Elkin being taken in sandwich. He's stuck behind the young Israeli from VDK Racing who needs the points as well after a, a weekend of struggle, unfortunately for him. But right now he's being stuck behind uh, Artem Severikin oh, in 8 and 9. Big slide from one of the Tony Cards getting squeezed out there. That was one of the privateers. I think Luca Griggs just saving it. And he's already had one big accident this weekend. He really didn't need another one. Stenzorn develop, uh, defending valiantly to Savrukin, desperately trying to hold on to his position as Ariel Elkin is going to get up the inside of Savrukin instead. And now look, Valtanen has caught right up to Rintaro Sato. He's going to make the bid for third position up the inside. That'll do nicely. Juho Valtanen, who almost won the World Championship, don't forget, on home soil two years ago, is looking hungry for a bid to get himself back into the top 10 of the starting grid. Yeah, let's not forget he was third in the World Championship back in 2017 already. You have Altanen, who uh, not so long ago was driving a car republic for SP Motorsport, going to the OTK car group and Tony Kart for the years to come. And uh, he just made that move stick on Ritaro Sato under the pressure now of Gabriele Gomez, the CRG driver, all the way down to uh, the Japanese driver. Can he go around the inside at turn number A? That's uh, neat and clean from Gabriele Gomez, upper place into fourth. Ritaro Sato is going to have to fight back halfway through this qualifying heat. Here he comes in turn number 10, but he's having none of it. Gomez on the way, on a charge, trying to catch up with Valtanen, but they still have one full second on the finish driver. This is the same story we saw yesterday from other drivers. Rentaro Sato starting beautifully and storming his way up to third position, not able to sustain it with the amount of wear that those tyres have got. Now Giovanni Trentin has moved his way into the battle as Ariel Elkin is trying to squeeze up the inside. Severukin is trying to fend off from one of the Koski drivers. I think that's Emili Koivisto. And then you've got Giovanni Trentin battling away. Oh, Severukin dives in on Moya. So Moya trying to hold it as they come off the final turn. Here's Giovanni Trentin getting up the inside of Stenzorn into turn one. And Elkin's going to get past both of them. Where did he pull that move? It nearly worked as well. So Rukin's going to storm past them. Absolutely mental move from Elkin. <laughs> if that had worked, that would have been the move of the century. Wow, side by side, three of them into one turn. That's actually brave uh, to try to attend that. But he didn't go that according to plan for Ariel Elkin. Just for now, we have a yellow flag in the turn number eight on the top side of the track. All two drivers coming together in Number five. Yes, That's I think it's uh, uh, Corvisto and Griggs. Corvisto yes, and Griggs have tangled with each other up at the top of the hill. So Griggs is out of it, Koivisto's out of it, and I think we've also lost Timo Kucharczyk. Kucharczyk has pulled off the road, so I'm not sure what happened to the pole, but he is out of this race as well. He was losing time anyway and having a horrible time of it, so now he will not start the World Championship final in the top 10. Very unfortunate for the pole, and it's going to be almost impossible to fight his way through this staunch group of talent to come back up into the top spot. But Gomez just trying to get well clear of Tuka Tarpanen. But Tarpanen is really pushing and he is trying to get up into that fourth place. If he manages to do it, that puts him under real threat of losing more ground to Rafael Kamara in the rankings. Yeah, let's see. Tarpanen with the fastest lap onto this track. 60, uh, second point eight. Trying to chase on uh, Gabriel Gomez in fourth. As they made their way down to the hairpin. Very heavy breaking point. We haven't seen that much of a ticking down over there. In the, but uh, he stays behind to cut up and then the Goi Gochuku half of a second in front of Havid Lindblad still with less than three laps to go before a checkered flag but those two still in formation further back of Lindblad. We cannot count out Tuka Tarpanen as a world championship contender here at all. He's currently looking at sixth on the starting grid for the final but if he gets past Gomez that should promote him up into fifth position and from the inside of the third row that is a very special position for Tuka Tarpanen to be. Don't forget last year in the junior world championship how hard he fought through the field to get second behind Freddie Slater. Took a Tarpanen, if he gets the wind up him, he knows just how hard he can go through that field. And if Tarpanen gets even a whiff of the World Championship, and you certainly have got it from the third row of the final grid, then he will definitely be fighting tooth and nail. He's been talking himself down all weekend long. He's been saying, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not as fast as I need to be. But he is one of those drivers that if he's not winning, nothing is good enough. And he has a great chance, as does this man, Juho Valtanen, of climbing back into the top 10. But if Tarpanen could get back into fourth position past Gomez, there could even be some interplay between the teams. 
Yeah, to get up and has a more than wild card in his sleeve. And let's see what he can do on, on his way to the final. Now standing in fifth place, trying to catch up for two less than three tenths of a second on Gabriel Gomez. As we're about to enter what will be the last lap between Lin those two. Lindblad's catching Hugo Chukwu. Yes, indeed. Just three tenths as we thought that Hugo Chukwu had this one in the back for the third time. Lindblad is uh, catching up his teammate. And now Hugo knows it. Yes, indeed. Just watch over his shoulder as uh, we saw the little gesture from Lindblad saying, let's keep on going, mate. I'm not going to attack you, so to speak. But I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, goes for the dive. As for now, Hugo Chukwu is on his way to pole position. We still have one way to go after this one as Lindblad is now in eighth place currently. Look, this is a team sport to a certain degree, but there's no team championship. There are no team orders. Once you get out on that track, there are no mates out there. You race for yourself. And Arvid Lindblad, if he can find a move in the final hairpin down the bottom of the hill on Yugo Ugochukwu, he's going to take it. So Arvid Lindblad will want to put himself into a good position. He's currently looking at eighth place. He could do with being a row higher on the grid. He needs to find something. And if he can get past Yugo Ugochukwu and make it a little bit easier for himself, he will give it a go. But he's not going to be close enough. He's going to hustle Yugo Ugochukwu right to the end, but he won't quite manage it on the American. You've got to give Arvid Lindblad plenty of credit for being forceful and tooth and nail to the end, but Yugo Ugochukwu is going to get it. Arvid Lindblad will be second. Third place is going to be Juho Valtanen in front of Gabriel Gomez and Tuka Tarpanen. Now that is a very deadly potential top six on the starting grid. As it stands at the moment, you could Chukwu, Pedersen, Gomez, Kamara, Kayak, and Tarpanen. Anything could happen in that top six. Anything could happen indeed, as Arvid Lindblad just missed his second victory in the qualifying hit for two little tenths of a second. A third win it is for Igo Igo Chukwu with his beautiful Mario Andretti tribute livery on his helmet. 1-2 uh, for Car Republic, Hugo Gochuku in front of Harvard Lindblad. Third place for Juho Valtanen in front of a courageous Gabriel Gomez who resisted all the way until the end in front of Tuka Tapanen. Artem Severyukin, after dropping all the way down to the edge of the top 10, managed his way through up to 6 in front of Ruben Moya, Runtaro Sato, Elkin. Then we have Alfio Spina running at the top 10 after a good effort of 10, 10 positions climb. Then we have Giovanni Trentin, Erolino Randini, Rasmi Ducimis, Bruno Del Pino, Matteo De Paolo, Martinus Stenzone, and Nicolas Pitilati down in 17. 18th in the race, Carmen Krav, the Estonian lady. And then it is Anna Shabdor and Laurence de Sertua, who's had a really difficult world championship this time. Uh, then it is uh, uh, Kuba Raski in front of Albany Vivas of Venezuela. Then it is Kevin Cavedo and Alvaro Hernandez. Then Robin Sarg and Rafael Modenese of Peru. Luca Griggs and Emili Coivisto, who had their incident. And then both carts got started again. They managed to bring it home to the checkered flag. Timotis Kuchin and Yeray Vallejo did not. So those two, unfortunately, coming off on the circuit. Well, a very, very tricky battle, that is for sure. And uh, we're going to have a very exciting battle as the contenders continue on their way. But what an exceptional battle it has been 